Advisors are a slug-like organic being that appear to be in the upper echelons of the Combine's hierarchy. Despite being above Dr. Breen and the scientist, the name Advisor implies that it provides information advice to something else, whether that is a boss above it, the Combine faction as a whole, or those below it is unknown. Advisors go through various stages in their life. The currently known stage is what Vortigaunts call Shu Lothui, a point in their life where they are still in incubation pods. During this stage, the advisor has a pale complexion. It has an extremely long tongue that it can use to pierce the back of the neck of a human being and kill. The advisor has yellowish blood similar to that of Zen creatures. They have powerful psychic and telekinetic-like abilities as well. They can pick up objects without touching them and can violently impact the mind of those around them. The advisor can also use its telekinesis to pull smaller objects close to it, like a shield. The advisors in this stage also make use of robotics including arms, a special multi-lens camera, and some sort of mask. The mask is connected to a type of electrical box on their underside, the underside which is covered in this frequently seen grey sleeve. The sleeve is made out of some sort of polyester or nylon, and has numerous points where it buckles or zips up. For transport, the advisors can also be placed in these flying synths. The advisors also have vocalizations. These vocalizations appear to be semi-robotic in nature. Take a listen. There's also another type of vocalization the advisor makes, and it can be heard when it goes to attack Eli. It seems to be very similar to a human voice. Around the time of Half-Life Alex, the advisors were already an integral part of the Combine administration on Earth. Curiously, a group of advisors was on the same train that Alex crashed at Fairview Junction, the same one that was transporting Eli. It's unknown if they died from the impact of the crash, or if they were dead beforehand and were being moved. Later, the scientists would discuss moving the vault with an advisor. However, their request was denied, and the vault was brought down. Five years later, Gordon Freeman would accidentally teleport into Dr. Breen's office. Breen would report the sighting to an advisor. Days later, he would contact one about trying to flee Earth. After the destruction of Breen's teleport and the Dark Energy Reactor, advisors would slowly begin to be moved from the building. Alex and Gordon making their way to try and stabilize the Citadel's core would see this process firsthand. As the Citadel began hurtling toward a Dark Energy Flare, advisors would begin to flee the building, with a number of them only getting to leave just before it exploded. Some of these advisors would crash in the Outlands, and some would be recovered. Either way, surviving Combine forces would regroup under their authority directly. During Alex and Gordon's trip through the Outlands, they would encounter an advisor in an incubation pod and attempt to kill it. It would escape as other Combine forces came to assist it. One advisor would lead a raid on the secondary silo of the White Forest base, though would fail. After an even larger attack on White Forest base, two advisors would attempt to kill Eli, Alex, and Gordon. However, G-Man would intervene resulting in the death of at least one of them, saving Eli from his death, but resulting in the disappearance of Alex. Advisors can be seen in Half-Life 2, both episodes, and Half-Life Alex. Each encounter with it is in a heavily scripted fashion. In Episode 2, there is an NPC advisor entity. This entity is what's used whenever you see the advisor throughout the episode. Not much of an AI exists in its vanilla form, when spawned in through the console, or even with Hammer, the advisor will not act or react to the player. However, the advisor seen on the big screen at the end of Half-Life 2, and the one seen in the advisor silo in Episode 1, is a Cycler model. Cyclers are a type of entity that will play a model's animations on a loop without any AI, and change which ones to play when damaged. The advisor's physical appearance has changed in a few ways between its various appearances in Half-Life 2, the episodes, and Half-Life Alex. Besides the poly count increase and texture fidelity boost, other artistic differences can be seen. Take a look at the different models. In Half-Life 2 and Episode 1, there are these prominent and ornate golden letters around the collar of the fabric sleeve. The actual skin of the advisor is different, too, being dark in tone. 
there appears to be an extra strap for the mask, and the camera is a lot bigger too. To go along with the new NPC, Episode 2 features a new advisor model as well. The model itself seems to be a halfway point between the Half-Life 2 model and the Half-Life Alex model. It features the ornate lettering, but it isn't as pronounced, and the overall design of the equipment, suit, and face is a bit more in line with the Half-Life Alex model. The primary Half-Life Alex model does not have the golden lettering. Otherwise though, it is quite similar to the Episode 2 model. It also features skins for being electrocuted by Alex's Vortigon powers, and when it has been burned. There are also a few other models to help represent the advisor in Half-Life Alex. The primary one that was just mentioned is this one. When Dr. Breen goes to talk with one at the beginning of Half-Life 2, this is actually a skin of the computer he is looking at. The advisor conferencing with the scientist in Half-Life Alex is a video file. Take a look. When the NPC advisor entity takes damage in any form in Episode 2, it reuses the gunship's pain sounds. You can also only damage it when you are at its height. Being below it will cause the bullets to pass through it. The original Half-Life 2 slash Episode 1 model features a set of unused animations that are unique to it. These animations seem to be a lot more gameplay focused, at least in comparison to the ones with the Episode 2 and Alex models. The animations include slashing attacks from the robotic arms, turning either direction and going forward and backward. 